Good morning and welcome to the show for October 31st. I'm joined by veteran CTV reporter and anchor Katie Marks and today we will continue to highlight the work of the broadcasting ones. Today Nick Hamasaki and Ali Montgomery explore what makes our championship flag football team tick. We'll shine the light on our new staff who are making a positive impact on our campus in our ongoing segment, Meet Your Staff. And we'll help you stay up to date on all the action around campus. Welcome to the show. The pumpkin carving contest launched our fall festivities last week, and it was two veteran carvers who once again impressed the voters. Maya Pierce and Tyler McCabe tied for top honors, but votes were spread all over the field of 24 contestants. Creativity and talent was definitely on display. Special thanks to senior leadership student Ian Burks and his team for producing this event. Only hours after the pumpkin carving contest concluded, our flag football team took to the fields for their second playoff game, and both reporter Nick Hamasaki and camera op Ali Montgomery have been following the action. Flag football has finally arrived at Colfax High School. The California Interscholastic Federation, or CIF, made the sport official last spring. Retired high school tackle football Hall of Fame coach, Tony Martello made the leap to flag football in this last spring. The opportunity arose and I thought it would be fun, uh, something that's challenging and something that was new and uh, it was a great decision. I'm enjoying it. It's great. But I believe, because I've seen both teams play, I think the hardest team in the section is Christian. Yeah, Coach Martello um, has kind of found a new passion for the game with this new challenge of coaching girls and coaching 7v7 and just with the different rules in flag football. And I think it's kind of re rejuvenated his um, passion for playmaking and drawing up defensive schemes against other teams. Just avoid your route and we'll get, maybe we'll get to the point we'll throw it to you. The girls have managed a 14-2 record so far this season. Winning games by an average of 27 points, but that isn't the only thing that resonates with the players. To me, it means, I, it's just like crazy to think that I'm like part of the first team. I mean, like we're gonna look back from now and, and it's just like crazy to see like all the other girls that will come after us and play the sport and just to know that we are part of the first team. Coach Martello's leadership has allowed the girls to make history multiple times. They are the first team, they are the first league champions, they are the first to win a playoff game, and as of now, they are the first to the section semifinal with aspirations for the first section title. Martello knows it takes many elements to experience this type of success. I think it's just a combination of everything. I think surrounded by really good coaches, the girls have bought in, and um, and I think we're doing some really good things the girls can catch, and we play really aggressive on defense. The girls will be moving on to the semifinals where they will face the 15 and three Christian brothers. For camera op and editor, Ali Montgomery, I am Nick Hamasaki signing off. The girls will kick off tomorrow night at Christian Brothers at 7 p.m. This is the first season in history that we get to report on both girls and boys football. On Friday night, the boys football team took on Bear River in the 36th annual River Bowl and won a 21-13 thriller at the Marston Stadium. Samantha Reedy Platt has this recap. On a perfect fall foothill night, the best rivalry in the Sierra Foothills took center stage, Colfax versus Bear River in the 36th annual River Bowl. And if that wasn't enough, the Colfax student body, guided by junior leadership student Drew Stowers, took pause to celebrate our veterans, active military, and first responders in the honor celebration, which added to what would certainly be a dramatic night. And it was. The game ball was delivered in a Black Hawk helicopter, piloted by the Army National Guard. And two of Colfax's finest, Kyle and Stuart Wells, were honored for their stellar military service. 
Kyle was Air Force Special Operations, and his brother Stuart was an F-16 fighter pilot. The football game kicked off in front of an energized Colfax student section, the Nest, and the teams exchanged blows for nearly the entire first half without scoring. Colfax had multiple opportunities, but penalties plagued the Falcons and gave the Bruins one last chance before the half, and they seized that moment, scoring on a 55-yard run with 46 seconds left in the half. The Falcons drove the field and seemingly answered the score with an acrobatic catch by James Hickey. But the score was called back and the half ended on a missed field goal. The Bruins would put the Falcons in a huge hole, 13-0, with a touchdown on the second play of the second half. Colfax did not waver in the least and put together a 90-yard drive of their own capped by a Thompson touchdown plunge to make it 13-7. Late in the third quarter, Coach Stowers dug into his bag of tricks and made a gutsy call on, the, on fourth and 15 when he dialed up a fake punt. And it worked. That kept the Falcon drive alive and resulted in a 14-yard strike from Roach to Hickey, putting the Falcons up 14-13 after a Robert Meyer extra point. The Colfax defense was relentless the rest of the night, not yielding a single point in the second half. After an Austin Leiden interception in the fourth quarter, the offense was able to put one more drive together, resulting in another Thompson run for touchdown, putting the Falcons up 21 to 13. The Bruins had one more chance to drive for a game-tying touchdown, but the Falcon defense snuffed it out and made it nine River Bulls in a row for Colfax. Reporting for CTV with camera ops Ali Montgomery and Mike Devine, I'm Samantha Reedy Ply. Another amazing Friday night in Marson Stadium. When evaluating the elements of a successful high school, the quality of the staff will always be at the top of the list. At a small school where staff have to wear many hats, this is even more important. Dr. Chastity Raybuck Bonilla worked tirelessly to make sure Colfax had the best pool of candidates for open positions, and then selected the best of the best to join the Falcon family. In our new segment, Meet Your Staff, Broadcasting One reporters are going to help us get to know our new staff just a little bit better. In this first installment, it's reporter Berlin Martin with camera op Corey Rosich Przlowski. Miss Bushy started her high school journey in a small town similar to Colfax, Florence, Montana, where she was also a Falcon. She got involved in her school through athletics. In high school, I was a, a student athlete, so I ran um, in track and field. I ran the mile and uh, the 4x4 relay. I played volleyball. I played soccer, um, and I played softball. I decided to become a teacher actually by working with students. Um, I used to take them to Costa Rica, and so every summer I would work with students abroad, and I got to see how powerful it was for them to experience another culture, another place, um, and people. Sophomore student Lucas Clark has already seen Miss Bushy get involved on campus. Um, I've seen Miss Bushy get involved um, in rallies. Uh, she was the, I think she was like one of the leaders for the senior class during the Color War rally. And um, she was also part of that dance Ms. at the Color War Rally, and it was pretty cool. Miss Bushy always brings the energy to her classroom, which does not go unnoticed by her students. My favorite thing about Miss Bushy is probably her energy. Her energy in the classroom is pretty high. Um, she always constantly wants us to say like hello to our classmates at our table, but in Spanish. Yeah. Miss Bushy plans on seeking out more opportunities to get involved at Colfax. Well, there's a lot of school spirit here, and it's been awesome because um, the school's done a great job of inviting uh, us new staff to participate. So I've been able to participate in homecoming. I went to the homecoming dance, which was really cool. Um, I've been to a volleyball game. Um, got to help out scoring and judging for the campus or the club day and other things like that. So it's been great to participate, and I look forward to more opportunities to get involved. They might not know that I snowboard and I ski, and so one of the things I'm most excited for for winter is to check out the local mountains. 
This is Berlin Martin for Camera Op Corey Brzezlowski from CTV signing off. Last Thursday, our cross-country teams headed to Bear River with championship aspirations. Alexa Maynard has this report. The Colfax cross-country team are PVL champions once again. The team continued their dominance in the PVL at Bear River for the PVL finals last Wednesday. The Falcons came out with victories in both the varsity girls and boys races. There were six Colfax runners who placed in the top ten receiving all league honors in the varsity girls race. It was senior Jesse Redding, sophomore Mike Redding, junior Sophie Sunding, and senior Jade Bittner who had highlight performances and helped the Falcons to victory. When the varsity boys team entered the race on Wednesday, they were leading the PVL in front of rival 12 bridges by two points. It was vital that the team race strong in order to maintain their lead and take the PVL title. Four men's varsity runners picked up top 10 in their race, receiving all league honors with highlight performances from junior Dylan Holloway, junior Gavin Lewis, and junior Sawyer Hacker, and freshman Keaton Hacker. In the end, however, it was a strong team effort that would ultimately land Colfax the title, beating 12 bridges by one point. The Falcons will continue their winning season racing in the Sackle-Keen subsection race this Saturday, with aspirations for another trip to the section and eventually the CIF State Cross Country Championship on November 25th. Reporting for CTV, I'm Kaylin Day for Still Image Yearbook Photographer Anna Piper and Editor Sammy Reedy Platt reporting. If you're a student at Colfax High School, you know nothing other than our cross country teams winning championships, but we are living in the golden era of running at Colfax and need to enjoy it. Congratulations again to Coach Redding, Coach Mitchum, and their teams. Congratulations are in order for Keegan Isetta, the winner of the ASB card and monthly drawing, who won two tickets to the Fall Play Clue. The play opened on Saturday, October 28th, and it delivered on the hype. If you've not seen the show yet, you still have two more chances on November 3rd and 4th at 7 p.m. I have heard nothing but good things about the show, and stay tuned to the bulletin regarding show times for the weekend. With playoff football coming to Colfax, the drama program will likely be adding another showtime. Today is the annual ASB costume contest. After the show, students can make their way to the quad and see some of the scary, funny, group, creative, and classic costumes your classmates have come up with. Contestants will walk the runway and judges will deliberate to determine this year's winners. On our next show, reporters Alexa Maynard and Olivia Bright shine the light on the Eco Club in the club spotlight. We will continue with our Meet Your Staff segment and keep you up to date on all the fall playoff action. Until then, I'm Samantha Reedy-Platt for Katie Marks. Have a great day, Colfax.